Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another cold and wet day here in North Texas. I know last uh, week we shot a video about some of the SVS speakers and I said it was snowing all around us, except for here. We were getting just wet rain. And you guys thought that's funny that I called it wet rain as if what other kind of rain do you get? Well, everybody else was getting snow. We just, we're just getting wet and Again, this weekend, we're, we're getting wet again, but we'll get through it. We're having more fun with SVS stuff. I keep getting SVS products sent to me. Um, I'm beginning to think there's a bunch of people out there that are just not quite happy with their SVS speakers. And after looking on the inside, I can, I can kind of understand why that might be. And so we're going to look at... What we did with the little ultra bookshelf model and then we're going to talk about this thing that came in over my shoulder here the svs ultra tower speaker and i had it up here a little closer i wanted to talk about it and it just didn't fit in the frame so i had to move it back there just just so it fit in the camera frame because it's a it's a full-size floor standing speaker and a nice looking speaker too uh just like the the little bookshelf and the center channel that was sitting in. Uh, these Ultra models have really nice cabinets. They do look nice. All right, <clears throat> let's dig right into these things and talk about what's here, what I did, what the upgrades do, and what you can expect from the type of upgrades that we're doing all the time. Let's talk about that. So let's first look at the frequency response of this thing from the factory. And if you look at it, um, I've got a printout of one here for reference for me. Uh, you can see there was kind of a humped up area uh, around 700 to 1000 hertz. There's just a high spot there. And then the frequency response of the tweeter was down in level quite a bit. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to kind of come in and correct that imbalance in the frequency response and level everything out a little bit. And so here's the new frequency response. Take a look at this. It is now balanced end to end much smoother. So you're not going to have um, that heaviness right there in the upper mid range where that peak was anymore. Um, just a little bit off axis, about 10 degrees off axis, the thing smooths out even more. It's really flat. So uh, measures great. I mean, by great, I mean it after the upgrade. Smooth frequency response. Spectral decay is really clean, um, about like it was. Uh, there's a tiny bit of little stored energy there in the upper woofer range. I pulled it down a little bit. The woofer's got a little steeper slope on it. Crossover point's been pulled back a little. Um, so that helped it out a little in that area. The impedance response is, again, um, about like it was. It's very easy load. And as we mentioned before, this is a four ohm speaker. Um, so. I know they may be advertising that as an 8 ohm. I was told they were advertising it as an 8 ohm speaker. I didn't, I didn't look on the website to check that for sure. This is definitely a 4 ohm speaker. Uh, the vertical off axis and horizontal off axis responses, um, they look okay. They're not, they're not bowling me over great, but they look okay. So um, we made some corrections. Um, we had to make corrections with the center channel. We had to fix some imbalances. And big thing is quality of parts. I can't stress enough how important it is in the quality of parts and how things sound. When you are down to this as the crossover, uh, you know, obviously they're trying to save money when they put the insides into this thing. There's, there's nothing here. Tiny iron core inductor, small gauge, electrolytic capacitor, sand cast resistor, there is a little poly cap on the tweeter circuit and a little iron core inductor. That's good there. Um, little Chinese made parts, hing tot, it says on the capacitor, whatever that means. Um, I'm sure that's just a little Chinese made capacitor that probably costs about 50 cents. Um, the binding posts, uh, dual binding posts, uh, the nuts on the back are steel, not something you want in the signal path. The wiring again is what looks like 
aluminum wiring. I don't even, I don't know why they wouldn't use copper wiring. It could be silver coated copper, but I doubt it because it's PVC jacketed. No one puts PVC over silver. And it it could be tinned copper. It doesn't look like tinned copper. It looks more like aluminum. So I'm going to say it's probably aluminum wiring. So out with this. Um, what the upgrade involves is all air core inductors. Good quality, 16 gauge, heavier gauge air core inductors. There's a sauna cap on the tweeter circuit. There is a Ursi poly cap in the woofer circuit. You get a set of tube connectors. You get all new wiring. This is high purity, four nines, pure copper in polyethylene jacketing. So good high quality wiring. You get enough solder to do the whole thing. Uh, the whole kit comes to uh, $205. So $205 you get all the good quality parts and wiring and connectors that get rid of all of this stuff. You can mount the tube connectors through one of the sets of binding posts and get rid of the other one or you can parallel one binding post up to the tube connector so you could use either or. And that should really transform the speaker. Your top end should be more balanced now, no more hump, and clarity and detail is way beyond what you're going to get with this level of parts. Parts quality matter, and it matters a lot. And there's no question about it. You listen to it, you A-B it, and you think, wow, that sounds fantastic. You go back to this, and you think, what happened? It sounds like somebody threw a wet blanket over the speaker. That's what happens. So... This one, um, it's available right now. And if you want a sheet of no res for it, we can throw in a sheet of no res. That's another $48.95 a sheet. Um, it will help. The no res will stiffen up the cabinet a little bit. It will tighten up the base response a little bit. You're not gonna see as huge a difference installing no res into this box as you do a lot of other um, budget level speakers because the box that they built for this thing is pretty solid. There's a brace running through it here uh, between the woofer and the tweeter and it's fairly thick material, at least three quarter inch. So it's not bad. So you, not bad at all. You could line this with some fiberglass insulation and call it good if you want. But the no res will definitely make some improvements. Now, let's talk about this big boy back here. And here's the lower woofer out of it. This is the other eight inch woofer that goes in the bottom of it. It's um, hidden nicely with these little grills on the side. So eight inch woofer on each side, MTM up top with the tweeter, uh, same tweeter, similar, similar drivers. And they've done what they've called um, a three and a half way design. So the mids are crossed a little differently than the tweeter. One crosses all the way to the tweeter. The other is kind of covering more of a baffle step loss. And, and then the woofers, of course, down at the bottom. So a little more complex design. I kept looking at the crossover in there. The crossover is mounted right in the bottom of it. It's pretty big. If you go to their website and you look up that model, you can see that exact crossover that's in there. And it's, it's the cheapest parts you can, you can buy to put in a speaker. It's the, all the inductors are all iron core not what you'd want in the signal path to any any kind of quality speaker. There's one air core inductor on the tweeter circuit and one little poly cap on the tweeter circuit. All the rest of the capacitors are electrolytic. All the resistors, they're all sand cast. All the legs on the sand cast resistors are all ferromagnetic. That's stuff you never want in your signal path. Um, yeah, not not impressive on the inside. And when I went to the website, and I had to go to the website because I wanted to see if they said anything about the wiring because it just didn't make sense that they're using aluminum wire. Same, with, same in the big model. And I, I didn't see anything on the website about the aluminum wire. Uh, I did see some advertising information on the website concerning these models and concerning that big speaker. And they were so funny, I just I had to print them off. I've got to share it with you. I've got to share this. Okay, the information on the website. Um, and these are listed at $199.99 each. Not $1,000 each, $999.99. I guess that hits you a little bit softer than that last penny would. So $2,000 a pair. I don't know why they don't price them per pair. No one's going to buy just one. 
speaker, it's like pricing a car by the tire or something. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. And it's done so often in the industry where people price these speakers as singles. I get messages every day asking me if our kits are listed per pair or per speaker. And obviously they're they're always listed per pair. You're you're buying a pair, so they're listed per pair. Only the center channels are listed per unit. But this is one of those companies they list the price per unit, which is crazy to me. But that's what's happened, and they they've messed up at the market a little bit. They are all the companies doing that make people think that the price is one thing when it's another. Crazy. Anyway, off of that soapbox. Before a model is ever constructed, drivers and cabinets are theoretically designed, theoretically designed, by our acoustic engineers using the most sophisticated computer-aided design processes available. Then prototypes are carefully measured and optimized in our anechoic chamber to achieve pitch-perfect frequency response. Pitch-perfect frequency response. Well, the frequency response of this one was really different than that one, and it was really different than the center channel. Which one was really pitch perfect, I'm wondering. Hmm. After the ideal theoretical frequency response is attained, an ideal theoretical response. That's funny to me. Exhaustive listening and measurements is done in listening rooms calibrated to closely resemble typical home-like room environments. The, the speaker is, or the result is a speaker that measures with near flawless real world frequency response. This one wasn't quite flawless. <laughs> that one, we're going to talk about it in a minute. That one measured really well. It really did. It measured really well. I'm going to give them props where props are due. But it was very different than this one, very different than the center channel. So I'm not sure which one was near flawless real world frequency response, but also optimized to sound amazing on a human level, on a human level, through listening tests with real music <clears throat> and cinematic content in a real world listening environment like your home. That's funny. And then on specifically on the page for the big ones, standing toe to toe with the finest speakers in the world, the flagship SVS Ultra Tower is a reference floor standing speaker, speaker built without compromise. Wow, it's built without compromise. Now you look at the crossover on that thing and you, and you realize they use the cheapest possible parts you can buy, but it's built without compromise. I'm not really, I'm not too sure about that one. Folks, if you want to go to the website, you can see the pictures of the crossover and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not air core inductors, which are more expensive. It's not poly caps on everything which works so there's no high-end caps like a sonic cap there's not there's not even copper wiring in the speaker so really built without compromise okay guys I, I had to gig you for that one um, without compromise for the most discerning audio fans well the most discerning audio fans are sending these things to me for upgrades so keep that in mind dual per dual opposing eight inch woofers Command a room with deep articulate bass. All that, yep, good. All, all of that conveys everything, powerful dynamics. Yeah, okay. Since premium drivers require an equally compatible crossover, no expense was spared with the intelligent SVS SoundMatch three-way crossover. Again, no expense was spared. Guys, look at the picture on the website. The cheapest budget parts that you can buy is what they're calling the sound match three-way crossover no expense was spared guys the really high-end crossover parts are not cheap I mean you start looking at, at capacitors especially from Doolin and uh, Jupiter cap and the MyFlex pure copper foil caps and you get into those performance regions uh, there's two thousand dollars worth of capacitors that would go into a speaker uh, these are a long way from no expense was spared. The no expense spared stuff, it, it gets pricey. It, it really does. Um, even the internal wiring, uh, the inductors are usually not too bad, but you, you can spend a lot on the top level capacitors. This one, none of the, these were not even 
we're not even at fair performance. We're at, we're at poor quality part level. So keep that in mind. Um, it goes on and talks about the, the tapered array that I already talked about. Um, and the precision tuning of the sound match crossover also ensures pinpoint accuracy from sparkling highs down to subterranean lows while maintaining pristine signal purity. Um, the upgrades we're talking about, they're all about signal purity. I mean, that's the difference between the budget level parts and these higher quality parts. It's all about maintaining signal purity. That's one of the reasons we use tube connectors on everything. There's this is a, just a pure copper tube. You're getting your internal speaker wire and your external speaker wire pretty much tip to tip with a copper tube around it. That's maintaining signal purity. That's the best um, connection you can make without there being a connection. In other words, since you have to put a connection somewhere, there's no better way to do it. That's the next best, best thing to having no connection in a signal path. And there's a huge difference in clarity and the detail level from the lower range to the high range when you step up to um, tube connectors even compared to high quality uh, copper binding posts it's still a an improvement in clarity the capacitors again tremendous difference in clarity same with inductors uh, when you put an iron core through this that iron core holds a little residual charge so the effect that you hear is a little bit of smearing of the signal, um, especially right in the vocal region. We always say never use an iron core inductor above 200 hertz. If it's super low frequency, low range only, like maybe these are only covering the, the lowest range, it's okay to put an iron core inductor in there uh, because your 10 or 12 millihenry inductor in an air core could be this big and you're not hurting it too much with an iron core especially if you're using um, something like the RC Super Q or something that's a laminated I-Core. It's not too bad. But as soon as you get up into the mid-range frequencies, those are the ranges you don't want an iron core in there because then you're going to start hearing the difference that the smearing makes. So, big difference in performance there. Now, I know I've hit these guys pretty hard, but let's talk about how this speaker measure, measures because... Uh, like I said, I give you guys props when props are due, and in this case, that speaker measured really well. If you look at the frequency response, um, the on-axis frequency response is pretty smooth. We're within plus or minus, you know, a dB and a half to two dB, one end to the other. If you look at the horizontal off-axis, the horizontal off-axis drops off really smoothly across the top end. There's no, there's no humps or anything there. And what's really impressive is the vertical off-axis. As you move up and down vertically, it maintains a really consistent frequency response over a wide range. The spectral decay is also very clean, really clean spectral decay. Now the impedance dips down there quite a bit. I was told this was an 8-ohm speaker. I should have looked online to see what they called it. But the, uh, the impedance does dip down to about 3.8, 3.9 ohms, and it stays at that 4 ohm range all the way across the response. Now, all that to say, they did a good job of designing the speaker. The engineering that went into it, the crossover design work, the quality of the cabinets, all of that stuff's great. They did a really good job. And the customer in this case, especially his wife, loves the cabinets. The cabinets look beautiful. This cabinet looks beautiful. So they're worth saving. They're worth spending a little bit of money on to bring that performance up to the level of a lot of the other things that you're getting with this company. Like I said, cabinets are nice. Um, this guy loves them. He's got, um, he bought them used, uh, so he's not full retail into them, but even at 2000 a pair, that's a nice looking speaker. So is it worth spending two or $300 on just the parts only, maybe $350 on parts? to bring the performance level up to what they claim that it's going to be, it may in fact be. It may, it may very well be worth spending a little money and doing that upgrade. Now on these, because it measured really well, I'm not looking to go in and redesign this thing. I'm not looking to go in and, and design a new crossover and try to fix imbalances in the frequency response like we saw in these. There was no real problems with the speaker. 
they did a great job engineering the speaker. They just, maybe they're hit, hit with the bean counters in the front office, I don't know. They're built to a price point, that's for sure. And the parts quality that's inside it are really cheap. If you just go in, and this is what I'm gonna recommend, I'm gonna try and get a schematic on this thing, and if I have to, I'll pop that one out and trace it all out, draw a schematic for you guys, and sell you good quality parts that you can just go in and point to point wire and replace basically part for part. So we're not changing their design. We're just changing the quality of the parts that are inside so that we can improve that clarity, that detail, the imaging, the sound stage layering, all the things that you want out of a speaker. Uh, a lot of times those capabilities are there. They're just being held back by this kind of stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what all the values are and I'll try to have that available within a week or so. And for you guys that own this big model, we'll help you reach those levels that you expected to get when you purchase that speaker. Um, that's it for this week's episode. Um, keep those speakers rolling in and I'll keep looking at them. I've got a line of them in here again. There's uh, some more BMWs and another ELAC speaker came in and a Martin Logan speaker that I've been working on that's right behind me here. You can Maybe you guys can see that one right here. And we've done some things to really improve that speaker. I think I'm finished with it, but I'm not completely sure yet. I wanna do some listening and figure out if I like what I've redone on that one or not. But yeah, keep those things rolling in. If you have questions, post them in the comment section. If you would, please hit the subscribe button so you'll get notification of the new videos that we're doing. Uh, we're going to be doing some more upgrade stuff that uh, for you guys to look at. And we're still going to go back to cables. I've got some really great information I can't wait to share with you on cables. So hang in there and uh, see you next week.